What are you doing, New Year's? New Year's Day! Happy New Year, music lovers! Welcome to 2023. I thought I would start the year by looking at one of my favorite holiday songs, which is What Are You Doing, New Year's Eve by Frank Lesser. Frank Lesser, of course, the incredible music theater composer, lyricist, wrote Guys and Dolls and Most Happy Fella and How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. This uh, was one of his first songs that he wrote, actually, music and lyrics for. He had been out in Hollywood for many years in the 30s and early 40s, uh, working as a lyricist with all the great writers, had a bunch of hits like Two Sleepy People and I Don't Want to Walk Without You and Heart and Soul. Um, but, uh, this was one of the first songs he wrote music and lyrics for. It was a year before Where's Charlie, which was his first big Broadway show that he wrote music and lyrics for. Um, that was actually, he was only supposed to write lyrics for that. George Abbott had come to him and Harold Arlen of Wizard, and Oz, Wizard of Oz fame, of course, uh, and asked them to write the score together. Harold Arlen had to pull out because his house burned down slash was burned down by his wife, question mark, brother-in-law. Harold Arlen had a messy life. He could not catch a break. Um, anyway, he pulled out, and then Frank Lesser came in to write both music and lyrics. 1947, this song, this little throwaway standalone song, one of the first Frank Lesser wrote music and lyrics for, and we can already see some of the things that make him such a great, great musical theater composer. And I think, see if you agree with me, I think one of the reasons that his music tells such story and is so grounded in character is because he started off as a lyricist. So, right at the very beginning, his first chord change is... Maybe it's much too early. Very, very strange chord progression. We're in F major, this is one in F major, and we go down to an E flat nine, E flat dominant nine. E flat major has nothing to do with F major. There's no E flat in F major. We have left the key. It is a non-diatonic chord, we call it. Why? Why would he start his song with this very strange chord progression? I think this is a character who is taking a risk. He's leaving his comfort zone. He's going someplace new to ask something that's a little scary. But it also has this great kind of apologetic flavor to it, this descending whole step from F to E flat. It's kind of like, sorry, sorry to bother you. I know you're probably busy um, and I don't really stand a chance, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a risk and leave my comfort zone. I'm gonna leave my home key and try anyway. However, let's take a look at what the melody is doing, because the harmony definitely is leaving. Melody, except for this little chromatic neighbor note, maybe it's much too early in the game. Diatonic. He didn't need to choose weird chords for this. He could have done this very, very easily with just one, four, five. Maybe it's much too early in the game. Would have been absolutely fine. A lesser composer. <laughs> See what I did there? a lesser composer would have done just that. No, Frank Lesser. So much story right there. If we look at that melody that stays in the key, diatonically, and we add it to this chord underneath, this E flat nine, we get this weird whole tone scale this confused, kind of ambiguous mush, right? Whole tone scale is all whole steps at a symmetrical scale, which means it's ambiguous. We don't know what key that is in. It's in no key, right? And I love that because that is what you get when you sort of take a risk, but not really. you are still got one foot stuck in your comfort zone. You're still staying kind of in the scale, but I also sort of want to take a risk. You end up with this confused mush, right? Let's take big risks this year, everyone. How about that? Let's all of us go all the way outside our comfort zone, not half in the com outside the comfort zone and half in it. No confused whole tone scale mush for us this year. That's my, that's my resolution. 
also a great character uh, descriptor here. He starts in this chord, he goes into someplace really interesting and new, and he goes right back. He dipped his toe and he's like, oh, that's enough. That's enough for me. I'm just gonna go right back. This chord didn't lead any place. Interesting, right? We're not modulating. It, it was a dead end. It was a dead end risk that went nowhere. And we're back here. Ah, but I thought I'd ask you just the same. Oh, there's good stuff going on here. Ah, but I thought I'd. So we have an E flat again, but now as part of a more traditional chord. It's the five of four, right? We have an F7 now that goes to four. Ah, but I thought I'd ask you, but it's not exactly a four. Sheet music says B flat, do not trust your sheet music chord changes, they will lie to you or they will be incomplete. This says B flat. It's not B flat. It's a B flat six chord. We have a B flat major chord with a G in it. And the way it's voiced, I really hear this triad on top, which is actually a G minor triad. I'd ask you. It's not, I'd ask you. Yes, I'm going to ask you. No, it's you. There's a little minor, there's a little sadness, there's a little bit, I'm so sorry, please, I, I didn't mean to bother you. Ask you just the same. Same is a full G minor chord. We lost all of our Fs. And then we get this great passing four minor chord on our way to, what are you doing? This little sad, sorry to bother you kind of chord, what are you doing? New Year's, New Year's Eve. So first of all, why does he say New Year's twice? That's a little weird. Take a look at your songs. If the song says something a little weird, if the lyric is a little off center, if it's repeating something, if it's using a turn of phrase that is not normal, don't pretend like it's normal, right? New Year's, New Year's Eve, what does that mean? Too many people just go right through it. What are you doing? New Year's, New Year's Eve. Why does he say it twice? Could be a lot of reasons. There's no right answer for these questions. And I always want to stress that. But there need to be some answers. You need to find your own answers so that you can put your own mark on the song. New Year's, New Year's Eve. Did he stumble? Did he run out of breath? Did he, was he going to say, what are you doing New Year's? And then he realized that that could sound like, what are you doing for like the entire year? He doesn't want to actually ask that. New Year's, I mean, New Year's Eve, that's what I mean. Another great uh, evaded cadence here. New Year's Eve, Eve, we go to the minor three. He doesn't go New Year's Eve confidently. New Year's I'm sorry to waste your time. And then he has to go all around this little circle of fifths, tritone substitution thing. And we go back into the second section, which has the same chord, the second A section. Wonder whose arms will hold you good and tight. Probably not mine. That's what this chord is saying to me. When it's exactly 12 o'clock that night, I'm gonna be alone. Minor chord. Welcoming in the new New Year's Eve, and we think we've actually come to a statement, to a real cadence, and immediately, Eve. He pulls the rug out from under this poor guy. Here's Eve. And it becomes this dissonant chord. He can't even finish a thought before he's already uh, second-guessing himself, sabotaging himself, and we're into the bridge which is in our minor three, which we heard earlier, right? New Year's Eve at the end of the first A section. Well, the whole bridge now starts in this minor sad place. Maybe I'm crazy to suppose. This descending bass line is also kind of sad sack, sorry. Maybe I'm crazy to suppose. Ugh, sadness. I'd ever be the one you chose. There's a little more hope there, though. It's a little more hopeful. Chose. But then right back to the sad again. Out of a thousand invitations. A little 
little more hope here. Just going around the circle of fifths. And we're back to our A section with the same sad chords. Ah, but in case I stand one little chance, just a little chance. Can't just say in case I stand a chance. No, it's just a little chance. Here comes the jackpot question in advance. The jackpot question. That is my favorite phrase in this whole song. It's so great. Frank Lesser has such a fabulous feel for colloquialisms of the day. I don't actually know whether jackpot question was a phrase or he just sort of put those two words together. We know exactly what it means. <laughs> the jackpot question in advance. It's probably no. What do you do in New Year's? New Year's. And again, we get through this dissonant chord. And we end up here with a little question mark. Asking questions in songs can be hard, especially when they end going down like this. New Year's, New Year's Eve. It does give a sense of sort of deflation that he knows the answer is going to be no. But these passing dissonances in the middle, they would allow you to make it a little bit more of a question, I feel like. New Year's, New Year's Eve. Just knowing that that passing dissonance is in there gives you a little bit of way to, to ask that question. Ask questions of your music. That is the whole goal that I have for this year is to show people how you can ask questions and come up with your own answers. Because they're all there. There's answers right there in the score. And they can be your personal answers. They're not right and wrong. There's no right way to do a song. Don't think like that. But have your own answers. Know what questions to ask. Know where to look and come up with your own answers. And let the music inspire your storytelling. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit like. All those things. Spread the word. Happy New Year.